Welcome to Chris Dries. I'm your host, Chris DiStefano, aka Chris Dries DiStefano. Today, we are going to talk about my favorite Republican who got so upset during a breakup that he decided to go to war. BLM came out of this man's top hat. That's right, my favorite six foot four vampire slayer, Abraham Lincoln. So a lot of people know young Abe, a.k.a. Abe Lincoln, was born February 12th, 1809, not so young anymore, in a one-room log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky. It's making me hard and just thinking about it. Hardin County, Kentucky. Then he did at some point move to Illinois, uh, Springfield, Illinois. That's why that's the state capital because of Abe Lincoln, Springfield, Illinois. Um, His parents' name were uh, Thomas and Nancy Hanks. His dad, Abraham Lincoln's dad's name was Tom Hanks. How sick is that? Literally, Abraham Lincoln's dad's name was Tom Hanks. Maybe he also was a Greek pedophile. Who knows? So Lincoln's mom's name was Nancy Hanks, and his dad's name was Thomas Lincoln. So uh, imagine there was a situation where Abe Lincoln's father wanted to take the mother's name which a lot of men do now then his father's name would be tom hanks thomas hanks that'd be sick that would be sick and then instead of um instead of abe lincoln growing up to be the president of the united 16th president of the united states who freed the slaves he'd grow up to be chet hanks who'd be in the background of a young gravy music video his father uh lost everything when Abe was young and they had to move to Perry County, Indiana, where they struggled to get by. They actually, um, Abraham Lincoln's father actually left him and his brother just alone as, as young kids. They had to fend for their life. They had to hunt their food, pick crops, whatever, whatever, be prostitutes, whatever it took to make money and feed themselves. That's what Abe Lincoln and his bro had to do. Schooling back then was limited to three uh, periods in local schools. Um, That's all he could do is three very short periods, learn a little bit, and then go off and help support his family. Um, Because that was life back then, back in the wilderness. Um, When young Abe was nine years old, his mom died. And uh, which sucks. And his sister, Sarah, had to take care of him until his father remarried. Because a lot of times back then, you got to understand, if your mom died, your dad didn't know how to do anything. Unless you were a piece of wood, your dad didn't really know what to do with you. So he was like, I have to go now find a wife who's going to take care of you because the dad, the men would never take care of the children. Like I'm over here changing diapers, you know, looking for pats on my back. And meanwhile, you know, Back then, you know, Abe Lincoln's father, Abe Lincoln's father probably didn't even know what his kids' names were. You just didn't know. They were just these little shits that were around the house that he would just give chores to. He didn't have a good relationship with his dad. Most kids didn't have good relationships with their fathers back then because they were drinking, not paying attention to them, and most likely cheating on their moms. So it's just what it is. It it happens. It's it's the 1800s, babe. You know, what are you going to do? There's nothing to do other than drink and cheat on your mom. So when Lincoln's mom died, it really affected him. It really, he was upset that his mom died because that was the only, his mom was like his dad. His, he probably thought his mom had a penis. And maybe she did. There's no records to indicate if she was or was not trans. At 22, Lincoln moved to Illinois where that's where he set out on his own, into Springfield, Illinois. And as I said, that's when it one day becomes the state capital because that's where Lincoln was from. Now, he, he, he did, Abraham, like many other people uh, who go on to become uh, big names in history, self-educated. He taught himself to read, taught himself to learn. He had that little limited formal education and his dad did not like him for that. His dad would get mad at Abraham Lincoln for reading books. He was like, you need to chop the wood and go hunt bear and stop reading. His dad was basically like reading is gay and Abe was like, well, maybe I am too. And we'll get to that in a minute. So young Abe Lincoln, he had a lot of jobs. He was a shoekeeper, a surveyor. He didn't know how to split firewood. He was a postmaster, Um, but he loved reading. He loved reading, he loved learning, and he the one thing he didn't love is women. He didn't really talk to that many girls, so that's why Lincoln's stepmother thought maybe he's gay. It's pos, he's gay because he doesn't want to talk to women, but I get it, you know? Back then, it had to be hard to talk to a woman. You really had to be into Bush, and if you were, you were, and maybe at that point, Lincoln wasn't. I respect that. So, Abraham Lincoln begins to study the law, 
Everybody wanted to be a lawyer back then. That was like a big time job. Everybody wanted to be an abogato. So did Lincoln. And he studied the law and he actually won a seat in the Illinois legislature, which what a legislator is, is the state state legislature's primary purpose is to draft and approve changes to the law. So Lincoln wanted to change some laws. And as you know, if you know his history, he went on to change some big laws. Um, but it all starts here. 1837, he actually passed the bar and then he moved to Springfield where he worked as a lawyer. So Abraham Lincoln, before he's a president, he's a man of many traits. He's a lawyer. He's a surveyor. He's, you know, he has all these odd jobs. Uh, you know, tapping that ass is not one of them. Getting Punani all day, every day is not one of Lincoln's jobs at this time. However, in 1842, he does meet Mary Todd, who people have said is one of the ugliest first ladies of all time, which they say that, not me. I actually thought Mary Todd was hot. Um, I, yeah, I like a woman with a man's last name. November 4th, 1842, Mary Todd and Abraham Lincoln, son of Tom Hanks, get married. And it's a beautiful thing. The Lincolns would go on to have four children together, but only one lived into adulthood. That's the thing back then is your kids, if you made it past childhood, it was like a miracle. It was because they didn't have, you know, they didn't have Dr. Fauci yet. They did not have ways to save the children. So, you know, Lincoln's kids died. He was very close with them. Robert Todd Lincoln died, uh, lived from 1843 to 1926. He was the one that lived into adulthood. Then Edward Baker, Edward Baker Lincoln died at four. William Wallace Lincoln died at 12. And his, fam uh, his favorite one, but people say his favorite one was Thomas Tad Lincoln, who died at 18. And it just was, it's horrible because I'm, uh, you know, um, you're close to your kids and then and then they pass away but that would drive him that changed the course of his life because his wife mary todd became extremely depressed after losing all these children and i bet you she probably said i wish that my husband would just die and not my kids but here's the thing if mary todd if you wanted your husband to die then we'd there'd still be slavery and there's not because of him so if if, if the kids had to die so abe could live then that's what freed the slaves we're talking a lot about Abraham Lincoln, young Abe, but let's talk about what's going on in America at this time. So tensions are high. We got the North, we got the South that are making a lot of money. America's doing very well, making a lot of money, but they're doing it differently. Now, of course, the the South is slavery. You know, there's that that they're, they're mass producers of cotton and they, they have the slaves picking the cotton and doing the work. And there's not much cotton that grows in the North, so there's no slaves up there. That's pretty much how simple it was i know that there's a lot of historians that will tell you differently but it, it, it is you know sometimes geography is destiny let's make that merch geography is destiny the north just didn't have cotton had the north had the climate to have cotton they may have been the ones with the slaves and the south not it, it so the geography in my opinion dictated the mindset of the people of that region the future of the u.s is about to break up. I think their tensions were probably, I think people, if you could talk to them back then, they could feel it. They knew that stuff was about to go down. Uh, they were probably hoping that it wouldn't. Um, but eventually they go into full on war, which is not going to happen today. Don't worry about it. I know the tensions are feeling it, but we're not going to go into war unless China wants to drop another weather balloon. So right now the US is just 33 states. Okay, we just got, we got the Louisiana Purchase, so we've added some, but it's pretty much still the North versus the South. That's pretty much, and California. California's in there too. The North versus the South in California. And a lot of people think the Civil War was just about slavery. Of course, there was, that was a part of it. Slavery was awful, and, the, and, and, and even, you know, America did it way longer than a lot of other first world countries, like the you know, the inhumanity of it was already being discussed publicly, but we stayed, America stayed with it to keep pumping out that cotton, but it was really more about money. It was Western expansion is why the Civil War began, okay? That, that was like the, that, that was the catalyst of it all. Um, you know, like I said, slavery was terrible, and there were a lot of people that were against it at that time, so much so that the Underground Railroad was invented. Shout out my girl Harriet Tubman from Philadelphia. Your Eagles almost won the Super Bowl. But you, you lost, and you'll, you'll get him next Sunday. So we're moving west. We're getting new states. We're getting more land. But how is that land going to be run? Are we going to have slaves or no slaves? This is the question. And this is what's going to push us into war. Because, listen, we got to grow cotton. We got to make tobacco. That's what's making us the big bucks right now. Cotton 
and tobacco. Today, it's reality TV and hot dogs. Back then, it's cotton and tobacco. And the world is undergoing a new change right now. They got their first little sex change back during this time. It was called the Industrial Revolution. You've heard of it, folks. The Industrial Revolution. Kind of how now artificial intelligence is, is taking over everything. Back then, it was factories and jobs. You know, peop, the same way how we're looking to the future and thinking AI is going to take everybody's jobs. What is everybody going to do? Our kids are going to have to, are going to be on OnlyFans. All that is they were having these same they were having these same fears back then. They were like, if, if we can mass produce stuff and there's factories everywhere and this industry can do it and these machines can do it, what are we going to do? Go to war! A big thing that happened, one of the most revolutionary inventions that changed the course of history was the cotton gin. The cotton gin was invented in 1794 and it was a machine that reduced the labor of removing seeds. But by doing that, it increased the number of slaves that were needed because there was more cotton to be picked because things can move a lot faster. So it's one of those catch-22 inventions. So Eli Whitney, who invented it, it's like, good job, but also fuck you. All right, so the North, you know, the North had farms too. They had a big manufacturing industry um, and they, they had small scale farms, but it was the South that relied on the large scale farming dependency on black people. The, they, they, the, the South, if you go to the South, even still to this day, it's so much farmland that they, and that was what, like I said, cotton and these crops were the main thing being exported. The main money coming in to the United States at that time was ma mainly from the South and they enlisted. And that's why black people were getting enslaved over and over and over again, because they the, the, they were the ones doing that backbreaking work. Of course, it's all wrong and terrible, but that is just the fact of what it was. And so tensions are starting to grow. Again, it's about money. It is about the inhumanity of slavery, but to Lincoln, it's about preserving the union. And we're going to get there. In the 1830s, the North started to oppose slavery's extension to the new Western territories. They said, listen, we're going West, but how about we do this with no slaves? Why don't we just move Kanye West with no slaves at all? We can do this. Other people will do the jobs. Let's make them be free. But the South said, no, that's the backbone of our economy. We literally, without slaves, we don't, we're not going to make any money because these Southern, you know, white people are be like, I'm not doing that work. I'm not, you know, you got to understand, not only was it backbreaking, a lot of, especially in certain geographical parts of the United States, the, the, the U.S. South, a lot of this was done in swamps. A big way black people used, uh, enslaved people used to die, they would get eaten by alligators. Like there was like, there was, there was so much problem, so many problems back then with, with being a slave, so many more issues that you're not even thinking of. Of course, it was horrific getting your freedom taken away, you know, getting hung, getting uh, uh, tortured, all horrific, getting ripped away from your children, all horrific, but it was also you were getting eaten by alligators. So white rich people are not going to do that. They're just not ever going to do that. And they're going to fight literally to the death and to preserve that. But from this, a new party came called the Republican Party, okay? So a lot of people, Republican parties now, because of social media and the youth is all getting, it all has negative connotations. The original Republican Party were the party that freed the slaves. Don't forget that. Things always switch, okay? Things are, things are always switching. You've only been living in your reality for whatever it is. You know, I'm 40 years old. I've been living in a 40-year reality. This was 150, 200 years ago. Things were a lot different back then. Republicans were the good guys. Democrats were the bad guys. This is big. 1854, the U.S. Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which allowed for popular sovereignty. Basically, it was saying that you've heard of Bleeding Kansas. If you haven't heard of Bleeding Kansas, it was a violent fight between the North and the, and the South, the Northerners and the Southerners of Kansas, which led to the Civil War. So Kansas, bloody Kansas became a big thing because Kansas was that swing state where some, there was a new territory. Some of the state wanted to be slaves, uh, pro-slavery. Some of the state was anti-slavery. And this state, based off what it was going to be, slaves or no slaves, was going to swing the balance of which one had the upper hand. Which, you know, If Kansas went anti-slavery, then mo majority of the states would be anti. If it went pro-slavery, then majority would be pro. It was a big problem back then. That's why you have bleeding Kansas. You have like this mini civil war which happened right in that state. And now Kansas is just flat land that nobody cares about. But back then it was a big deal. In 1854, the U.S. Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which allowed for popular sovereignty, which basically said the government is based on the consent of the people, not the federal government. No federal government, which was interesting because, you know, the, the people are like, wait, the government's not going to help us. People get very used to relying on the government. 
And you, you know, I think the people who do the best in life realize they don't need the government. Or, I mean, they do need the government, but they don't need as much of them as you think. The government's not your friend. Never forget that. They are not your friend. They don't really want to help you. They want to do what's best for themselves, which is keep the slaves. It's 1856. Abraham Lincoln leaves the Whig Party and joins the Republicans, and he starts to become really popular debating this man named Stephen A. Douglas, who actually potentially may have hooked up with Abe Lincoln's future wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, because Stephen A. Douglas was a possible suitor. So the issue is, is Mary uh, 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 Stephen A. Douglas may have tapped may have tapped that ass before Abraham Lincoln tapped that ass of his wife, and all this stuff fueled with Abraham Lincoln just wanting to get out there and become a senator and one day the next president, motivated him to literally come up with some of the best speeches and best lines that the American people were like, we fucks with Abe. He became very famous. He was starting to become really famous during this time. He was like Jack Harlow and Bad Bunny. He just started to get a lot of people just started to be like, I want to go see this guy. He delivered speeches like his house divided speech. Um, he, By the way, one of the first politicians to really say that and kind of say like, hey, America's falling apart. He quoted the gospel, which of course people love, especially in the South. And he claimed that government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. So he was representing that silent majority, which again, very similar today. I think a lot of people felt like, hey, we know we can't be half slave, half free, but the dope thing to do was to pick a side. And that's what people do still to this day. They always choose a side. Just know, babe, you don't have to choose a side. You can remain in the gray zone, one foot in, one foot out. That's why I'm christening the closet, baby. Unfortunately, Abraham Lincoln does lose the Senate election. What can you do? But he performed so well that his reputation, he became a star. Even though he lost, he became a star, okay? Abe Lincoln's profile reaches a fever pitch height in 1860 after he delivered a bomb-ass speech at New York City's Cooper Union. Lincoln elaborated his views on slavery by affirming that he did not wish for it to be expanded into the Western territories and claimed that the founding fathers would agree with his position. Very interesting. He said the founding fathers wouldn't even want this. Earmuffs Ben Franklin. He said most of the founding fathers, earmuffs Thomas Jefferson. Wouldn't, George Washington probably wouldn't want this, is what he said. He said he doesn't want this, even though he also had slaves. He was like, listen, I'm just banking on the people at that time don't know how to read or write, and I'm just going to tell you the founding fathers didn't want this. Um, so, But in May of 1860, the Republicans choose Abraham Lincoln from Hardin County, Kentucky, as their candidate for president. The Republicans rejoiced 1860, May 1860 as a good day. As a good day when the Republicans chose him and Lincoln came down an escalator and was just waving at the people, knowing that's going to be four great years. So the presidential race, we got the Democratic Party that split up. We got Douglas representing the North. We got John C. Breckinridge repping the South. So again, the Democrats are the ones who are kind of pro-slavery. Don't never forget that. Demi Wemmies, okay? They were slavery. So, and then we got the other two uh, people running. So that's the Dems. And then we got the other two running for the Republicans. We got Abraham Lincoln and we got John Bell, who was uh, running. There was a, a party called the Constitutional Union Party, the Cups. So Breckinridge and Bell split the vote in the South and Lincoln won most of the North. So he carried the Electoral College and became our 16th president. Okay. So he's the one that became our 16th president and he kind of uh, inherited a country that was a bit of a mess. President Lincoln, becomes the 16th president in 1861. And again, like I said, in his speech, he, he flat out said, Western expansion should not have slaves. Now, Abraham Lincoln inherits a mess because our 15th president, James Buchanan, who a lot of people definitely thought was gay, didn't have a first lady, and some of his uh, friends would call him Aunt Nancy. James Buchanan did not make any decisions while he was president. He, he just let the South do what they want and the North do what they want. All the press, all the pressure from the media and his constituents, he did nothing. So now Lincoln is in a position where it's it, it's bubbling over and he's going to have to choose. So if James Buchanan would have just chosen one, then maybe James Buchanan is the president who's known to uh, for us to be in the Civil War and he's the one that gets shot in the head and killed. And Abraham Lincoln just grow up and be the, the, the real first gay president. The South, by the way, hates Abraham Lincoln. The South hates Abraham Lincoln more than like Democrats hate Donald Trump. Like literally the South hates Lincoln with a passion, with a passion. They hate 
They hate Abraham Lincoln. By January 1861, states legitimately started seceding from the Union. They just start to say, we are leaving. It's either my way or the highway, and I and there ain't no highways yet. We haven't built any highways yet because the Chinese haven't come. So I'm leaving. So what does succeed mean if you don't know and you're a stupid asshole? It means to withdraw formally from membership of a federal union, an alliance, or a political or religious organization. So when people secede, that means they're leaving. So I seceded from my relationship with Jasmine, but then I came right back because I said, I want to be your little sex slave. By the time Lincoln was inaugurated in March of 1861, seven Southern states had seceded from the Union and formed the Confederate States of America, President Jefferson Davis. We had Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas. They were the first seven to go. Then Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina followed shortly thereafter. So we, Abraham Lincoln takes on a big, big, big problem, okay? He is saying no to the breakup. In April of 1861, he sent a fleet of Union ships to supply uh, Fort Sumter. This is where the Civil War starts, um, right there in South Carolina. And the Confederate forces from this newly formed uh, Confederate America fired on the fort and the Union fleet, which pretty much began the Civil War. So I think at that point, Abraham Lincoln was like, yikes. He was like, shit, I fucked up. Even Mary Todd was like, damn it, I should have went with Stephen Douglas. This is going to suck. So the Union thought it was going to be a pretty short war and easy to win. But the South came in strong, baby. Here's the thing you have to understand about the South. Number one, the Union Army outnumbered the Southern Army like two to one or maybe even more. But still pretty much like today, the South they are they are the fighters. They're the ones that grow up on the land. They're the ones that are nice with the guns. They're the ones that know how to blow shit up. They're the ones that are priming themselves for war from the time they're little kids. The North, it's a little bit easier life in the North, right? You don't have to, do, even today, most people in the North don't have guns. Everybody in the South has a gun. They will shoot you. As soon as you put two feet on their property, you're going to get shot. So that's what it is with the South. They were better warriors, okay? They're better warriors in the South, even still to this day. So the Battle of Bull Run, which Venetia wrote Battle of the Run, was the one of the bloodiest conflicts really in American history, okay? I mean, everybody on both sides, massive casualties. The Civil War in, here's a fun fact. The Civil War, okay? The Civil War, more Americans died in the Civil War than all other American wars combined still to this day. More died in the Civil War because everybody, not only was it so bloody, everybody that died was American. There was, the enemy was, we were each other. So 600,000 Americans died during this uh, war and it lasted four years. It was the North versus the South. The Union is the North. The Confederates are the South. It's brother against brother. It's, you know, husband against father-in-law. It is literally, there are so, some of these Places were so divided that it truly was in your own family. You had one in the South, one in the North. So it's like a lot of people are like, oh, you know, somebody has, some mom has two kids and they're both playing in the Super Bowl. Who are they going to root for? Who's the mom going to root for here? The North or the South? I don't know. It must have been a very, very difficult thing to deal with. I would be, here's what I would be. I'd be in the North because I'm, I'm very anti-slavery, but the issue is I love biscuits and biscuits are just better in the South. So I don't know. It would, I would have to take a night to think about it, but ultimately I would say that not having slaves is more important than biscuits. Well, then you could say, well, you know what? Who probably makes the best biscuits? Slaves. So it's a coin flip. I'm kidding. Edit that part out. And by the way, anytime that I've said slaved instead of enslaved, my apologies. When you see me in the street, punch me in the dick. Now, here's the thing. War is wild no matter what time it's happening in. In the Civil War, it's really wild because this is the first generation of like automatic weapons, a lot of bombs. The deaths were gruesome. Gruesome, gruesome. No antibiotics have been, you know, uh, invented yet. No hygiene. People getting their limbs amputated. Bloody, close-handed battle. It was crazy. Now, Lincoln had some service time. He fought in the Black Hawk War of 1832, and he proved himself to be capable. But, you know, he's an older man now, and he's the president, so he's not going to be leading the troops or anything like that. And he was up against, you know, Jefferson Davis was an amazing Confederate leader, but Robert E. Lee who was from Virginia, who led the Confederate Army, was still to this day, a lot of war historians say Robert E. Lee is one of the greatest generals of all time in world history, not just American history, world history. Robert E. Lee 
is one of the main reasons why the South was able to put up such a good fight for so long because he was just better. Graduate of West Point, um, military genius. Abraham Lincoln wanted Robert E. Lee to come to the North, but Robert E. Lee was like, no, I'm from Virginia. So I fucks with VA and I'm not, I'm fighting for the South. I literally, because I want, I want, I want the enslaved. Abraham Lincoln, a lot of his views on slavery and a lot of the way he was as a man was shaped by his friend, former enslaved person, Frederick Douglass. So a lot of people know Frederick Douglass, you know, uh, iconic, big, you know, uh, uh, gray hair coming out like this, probably what uh, Mary Todd Lincoln's Bush looked like. And, and he, Abraham Lincoln likes Frederick Douglass and Frederick Douglass is discussing with Abraham Lincoln about what it was like to be enslaved and how rights need to be better. And, you know, typically at that time, the Union Army, you know, they had free black men in the in their ranks. And but the black soldiers made three dollars less than their white comrades. And Frederick Douglass protested that he he said, you know, why is that so? And Abraham Lincoln said the conditions black soldiers faced were a necessary concession of men and of, for men of color to serve. So even Abraham Lincoln, who was going to free the slaves and, 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 and is a hero amongst you know the black community today, as he should be, is still at that time, white men at that time are still like, yeah, but you're still, we're still not equal. There is one of those things where, yes, it's not just like only the good whites lived in the North and the bad whites lived in the South. That wasn't the case. There was this sentiment of racism happening all throughout the country that, you know, it takes a long time for it to go away. And thank God it's gone now. Douglas, what he admired about Lincoln is his decency and forthrightness, he said. Um, and he said when, you know, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln met once, he said, you know, I'm confident, Frederick Douglass said to the press, he was confident that slavery would not survive the war and that the country would survive both slavery and the war. And Frederick Douglass, you were right. But here comes China. Abraham Lincoln, we're at war. It's 1862. Now, who are you going to go talk to about this? Your wife, right? His wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, as we said, you know, she at this time was very depressed because her children were dying. You know, their, their, their young son, Willie, died of typhoid fever in 1862 at just 11 years old, right in the beginning of the Civil War. So he can't really talk to her. She's extremely depressed. She's, you know, the, the, the American public is like, this lady is like depressed and doesn't want to talk to anyone. It's just like negative. But I mean, all your kids were dying. I get it. But she was for the most part, you know, she used to be fiery and, and outspoken and just really didn't take any BS. But at this point, you know, things are sad in her country, in her life. And she's become she's coming across kind of crazy to the public and unwell. They a lot of people at that time just thought she was nuts. Like they thought like a full blown schizophrenic was living in the White House with Abe Lincoln. Also, Mary Todd Lincoln was a bit weird for for the public back then. She would hold seances in the White House in the hopes of communicating with her you know, son, who she greatly missed, her young son, Willie, she would have these seances and people knew about that. So they kind of were like, that goes against Christianity, that goes against Jesus. We're like, er, I don't know. Here's a little Christie's conspiracy. There's people out there that say Abraham Lincoln is gay. Here's why people, some people think Lincoln could be gay, 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 is because when he moved to Springfield, Illinois, aka Illinois, and he went to Joshua's Speed General Store, which is now probably Walmart, to buy a bed, it was $17, and that's a lot of money, okay? $17 in, 18, in the 1800s, that's a lot of Yeezys, and it was too pricey for Lincoln. So Joshua said there's a big room upstairs, big, huge room upstairs, and they could share a double bed, and his friendship of him sleeping in the same bed with his boy Joshua went on for four years. So I don't know. What do you think? Write in the community board right there at youtube.com slash Christy Comedy that you've liked and subscribed to and let us know, was Lincoln gay and was he a top or bottom? He also was a comedian. He was known to be very funny. Um, he, you know, he was always had, a, he always had like a nice joke as his stepmom and mom said he, the kid was funny. Um, some people say uh, he was a vampire. We don't know where that comes from, but I will say Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer was one of the craziest movies Hollywood has ever made. It kind of felt like they just gave up. And they had run out of ideas for movies. So they were like, what about Abraham Lincoln as a vampire slayer? Let's try that. So January 1st, 1863, happy new year. Abraham Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation after the Union got their asses handed to them in the Battle of Antietam. So this was the order where he says, all persons held as slaves are henceforward free. So if you were a slave in any of the Confederate states, 
On January 1st, 1863, after the Emancipation Proclamation, you were now free. But it didn't instantly free any enslaved people because the issue is the Confederate states like, yeah, but we're not a part of your country. So you're not free. And so if you could then, if you were an enslaved person back then, though, and you could get to a northern state, you know, like Maryland or there's a, in Cincinnati was a big one where, you know, one side of the river is Kentucky where it's slave. The other side of the river is Ohio where it's free. So people would, uh, enslaved people would try to swim across the Ohio River uh, and get to, you know, freedom uh, in the north. A lot of them unfortunately drown. As the northern troops start to advance to the Confederate South, every time they win a battle, they free the enslaved people. And then those enslaved people go behind Union lines and they are safe. They have to fight in the war, but they're free. All right. So Abe Lincoln, his army, they're fighting the war. They got two huge victories in the South in July of 1863, Vic, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and the Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania. Battle of Gettysburg is the turning tide of the war. If you ever have an opportunity to go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, go visit the battlefields. Literally, it's amazing. There's some of the, uh, uh, you know, the actual sites still look as they did back in that time. And uh, this is where Ulysses S. Grant uh, enters the chat and becomes famous because he was just whooping ass as the head of the Union Army in the Battle of Gettysburg. In eight, November of 1863, Lincoln actually dedicates uh, a ceremony for the new National Cemetery at Gettysburg because so many soldiers died. So many people died on the North and the South that he was like, I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta make this a cemetery. And this is where he makes his famous speech, the Gettysburg Address, which a lot of you have heard at least the beginning of. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And then the last line of the Gettysburg Address, you've heard a lot too, where he says, a government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. So that got huge applause breaks. That was a banger. You want to talk about dropping bars? He just dropped bars. Okay. Abe Lincoln just, he was, you know, he was like, he was one, he was like the original uh, Lil Yachty dropping bars. 1864, Abraham Lincoln wants to be reelected president. His Democratic nominee that he's going up against, former Union General George McClellan. Remember him? That's the guy Lincoln demoted because he's he lost too many battles. We don't know it's going to be, you know, uh, McClellan's going to be like, you know, F you, you're losing the war, blah, 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 blah. But at this time, he wasn't losing the war. There were a lot of Union victories, especially General uh, Tecumseh Sherman, William Tecumseh Sherman's capture of an Atlanta, Sherman's march to the sea. All that's happening while Lincoln's running for office. So a lot of the American people are like, we want the president. El Presidente. And what Abraham Lincoln also was doing to even get some Southern votes was kind of addressing the need to reconstruct the South and rebuild the Union. He said, with malice toward none, with charity for all. So he's not saying, hey, he's not saying, you know, you fought me. Now you're going to pay the South. He's saying, you know what? We had a war. Union's probably going to win. Let's rebuild the South and get this Union back together. He's not you know, firing cops and firemen because they didn't get vaccinated. And then three years later, when there's no reason for the vaccine anymore, he's not, he's, 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 he's giving them their jobs back at the pay that they had it three years ago, not as rookie salaries, which is what's happening to the NYPD, FDNY, and DSNY. I think it's fucking disgusting. You and your pieces of shit who run the government. Go to betterhelp.com slash chaos. Got 10% off your first month. <laughs> All right. So finally on April 9th, 1865, Civil War comes to an end. Confederates lose. They surrender. Robert E. Lee surrendered at the Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, which, again, if you've never had an opportunity to go see that, go see that. Um, it's still set up the way it was back then, and it, it was very difficult for Robert E. Lee to um, surrender. You know, very prideful man. Abraham Lincoln lets the South go home with their weapons and to, 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 to guard their farms and, you know, live their life. He, he basically says, listen, this is not like enemies. You're not our enemy. We had a war. It's over. So much props to Lincoln for that because he could have decided to go another way and then we probably would have erupted into yet another civil war. Then only a couple of weeks later on April 14th, 1865, Lincoln has a very bad date night. Mary and Abe go out for a date to see our American cousin, not to be confused with my cousin Vinny, at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Now, during the uh, intermission, he dismissed his bodyguard for some reason at that. He just said he could go away. There was no Secret Service back then. He just had bodyguards. 
So John Wilkes Booth, the man who would go on to assassinate President Lincoln, was actually one of the most famous actors of that time, okay? So not a lot of people thought he was going to be assassinating the president. I mean, this guy was famous. But I will say, at least John Wilkes Booth, being a crazy actor, actually did something, okay? He didn't like the president, so he killed him. He didn't just sing Imagine in black and white, which I like. It wasn't just at, they weren't at the Golden Globes, just fake clapping, for the the environment. He was like, no, I actually shot somebody in the back of the head. So in that way, I respect you, John Wilkes Booth, but also fuck you. John Wilkes Booth walks into the theater. People are like, oh, is that John Wilkes Booth? Ooh, look at him. JWB. And he went to go pick up his mail that evening. Okay, that's what he says. He was going to pick up his mail, but then he began to spy on Lincoln through a hole he had pre-drilled. Okay, so he literally had this whole, this was premeditated. And he shot Abraham Lincoln and he shouted, six semper tyrannis which means thus always to tyrants, basically oppressive leaders will always be overthrown. So that's what it means. So he, again, because he thinks the war is still actively going on. He's an idiota. And then he leaped from the balcony, hurt his leg because he's just a weak, you know, feeble little bitch. He hurt his leg, but he did escape. And then a week later, he was shot during a standoff with Union soldiers. So eventually they caught up to him, killed him. Um, but, you know, he suffered his last week with a broken leg. People were, you know, taking him in. A lot of people didn't even know he was the one who killed the president. He, he, he wound up at a farm, I think, in Maryland or Virginia. I forget which one. And somebody just took him in. They didn't know that he shot the president. They had no idea. It was like when Andrew Cunanan killed Versace in the 90s. And he was just on the run. And I literally thought that Andrew Cunanan was going to come to my house and kill me and my mom. So that's what that that he was like the original Andrew Cunanan. And was John Wilkes Booth gay? I don't know. Probably. He was an actor. So Abraham Lincoln doesn't die immediately. This is a slow, agonizing death. Um, He was carried to a boarding house across the street from the theater. But not that he ever regained consciousness, but he, you know, the DMT was definitely starting to settle. It was definitely starting to secrete, but he wasn't dead just yet. He died in the early morning hours of April 15th, 1865. Um, he was, of course, you know, made a national martyr. This is a horrific thing. The president died on April 21st, 1865. A train carrying his coffin left D.C. On its way, it went to Springfield, Illinois. Um, it actually traveled through 180 cities and seven states so mourners could pay homage to the fallen president. It did go through New York City. Um, it went through New York City. And President, one day, Teddy Roosevelt, who would go on to become the Teddy Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy from the Rough Riders, who we've spoken about uh, a lot, who gave us Puerto Rico. Ted, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and listen to the last Christeries and some of the episodes about Teddy Roosevelt where we talked to you about how Teddy Roosevelt gave us Puerto Rico. Teddy Roosevelt and his brother watched from their New York City apartment, watched Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession go by them. And he was thinking, maybe one day I'll be the president and I can be in that coffin. In conclusion, Abraham Lincoln, self-taught lawyer, legislator, potential gay guy, vampire slayer, goes on to become the 16th president of the United States, gets us out of slavery, gets killed uh, by an actor, a deranged lunatic actor, gives the Emancipation Proclamation, Gettysburg Address, does probably, I would say, other than George Washington, is the most famous president in American history. He's a great American, a Republican, um, and one of probably the most gifted orators in American history. Um, loved him. Love Abe Lincoln. Happy President's Day. Happy President's Day out there. Uh, we don't have this holiday without, without Abe, young Abe. And one of Abraham Lincoln's favorite quotes of mine is this. I am not bound to win, but I am bound to be true. I am not bound to succeed, but I am bound to live up to the light I have. What is he basically saying? Stay in the present and intermittent fast. Remember, baby, yesterday was history.